Thank you for joining us tonight as we continue to bring positive Hmong news to uplift our community. Tonight, Nyoja Milwaukee will take you to meet Wisconsin State Representative Frederick Kessler as he talks about his connection to the Hmong community of Wisconsin. We will also showcase our very own Hmong-owned business, Resting Place Massage Therapy Center owned by Abby Yang. We will also have important community announcements to share with you. Frederick Kessler is an American lawyer and former judge who has served as a Democratic Party member of the Wisconsin State Assembly representing the 12th Assembly District since 2004. Nyoja Milwaukee TV had the privilege to get a little insight of his career as a public servant and his connection to the Hmong community. Let's go take a closer look and see what he has to say. I'm Frederick P. Kessler. I was uh, uh, elected to the Assembly when I was very young and then uh, uh, served for a number of years in, uh, in the 1960s in the mem as a member of the legislature. And in 1972, I was appointed as a judge uh, in the circuit court, the county court uh, originally, and eventually became a circuit judge. Well, I have to say the Hmong community is a lot like my family. My parents were German immigrants. My mother particularly had a fifth grade education. She came over to the United States with a 19 year old sister and worked as child care. When she paid off her passage, she ended up uh, working as a waitress. But one of the things that was very important in my family, and I think that's very important in Hmong families, is the importance of education. My mom made me study. She said, I want you to be a lawyer. And my, I had an older sister who became a doctor. And my third sister, who was six years younger than me, became a teacher. And I'm seeing that in my friends in the Hmong community. They have uh, put enormous pressure on their children. They want their children to be successful because they had to sacrifice enormous uh, things to get there and to get the, the opportunity for them to be here in, the, in Milwaukee and here in the United States. My first contact with Hmong people was actually when I was in uh, juvenile court because one of the important things that uh, happened is that was in the early waves of Hmong people coming to Milwaukee, uh, there were people whose children had to have emergency operations and they did not understand what was going on, they were taken to Children's Hospital, and when the parents were unable to consent or what, unable to comprehend what was being asked of them, uh, they would call a judge, and I would go down to Children's Hospital with a court reporter, and we'd have a whole hearing, which a doctor would have to testify, and uh, uh, we tried to translate uh, so that the Hmong family could understand what was going on. But sometimes it was very, very difficult for them to understand why an emergency operation had to take place right now so that their child's life could be saved because they, they didn't comprehend how dangerous this was. And I kept thinking at that time, wow, this must be really tough for the parents. It would be so nice if there were Hmong court reporters or Hmong clerks of court or even Hmong judges who could say, hey, we're like you. We understand this, and we're not gonna let your child to be hurt. The important criteria when you're in a public office, particularly as a judge or uh, an, an area where you have to make decisions, you have to be courageous. You have to be able to make unpopular decisions. When I talk with uh, uh, Judge Yang, I tell her, 
the, you're going to get some cases that are going to be very, very difficult. And sometimes you're going to have to make decisions that the public doesn't care for. But you have to be able to do that because that's the important thing that when you're in public officials, you have to look for the good of the community, not just for your own benefit. As many people know that uh, we, we're strong supporters of public education and we're strong supporters of higher education at the university. My wife and I uh, have been very fortunate that uh, uh, we've been blessed and we set up a scholarship uh, fund uh, because we knew that uh, for people to succeed, they have to have an opportunity to go all the way and get a, a degree and maybe even go and get a professional degree. And our scholarship fund uh, was uh, provide for scholarships to the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee for children who graduated from the Milwaukee public schools. And one of the things that was most impressive, we've done this for probably 20, 25 kids already have gotten scholarships of 1500 to $2,000 uh, from, uh, from the foundation uh, that we've set up. and. Uh, uh, about 20% of them are Hmong kids. I mean, that's way out of proportion to what their population is in the Milwaukee area. But that tells me that the Hmong families really want their kids to have an education and they're willing, willing to make sacrifices uh, and want their kids to go to school and, uh, and, and do a little bit better than they did. Stay with us. When we come back, we will continue on his vision and work for a Hmong community. So you've had the talk, right? The one where you sat your kids down and told them to stay away from cigarettes. Because cigarettes are dangerous, addictive, and full of nasty cancer-causing chemicals. That's what I did. I'm pretty sure my kids even listened. And I thought my work was done. Man, was I wrong. Tobacco's changed. I found out there's a whole new generation of nicotine products out there. Pouches and liquids. Some even run on batteries. And the flavors are ridiculous. There's a lot to learn, so let's get started. Looking for something sweet? You can skip the candy aisle. Now many of the same flavorings used in popular candies and treats can be found in a bunch of addictive new tobacco products. There's grape, strawberry, cotton candy, even gummy bear. It's unbelievable, until you realize most tobacco users get started before they turn 18. The fact is, flavored tobacco products are often the very first tobacco product a young person tries and there's just so many flavors and products for them to choose from. Like these little cigars and cigarillos, available in hundreds of flavors, they're sold in packs and one by one, sometimes for less than a dollar. Just look how shiny they are. Then there's dip, chew, and snooze. If you're thinking smokeless tobacco is a safe alternative, you're wrong. This stuff can lead to mouth sores, tooth decay, and cancer. Menthol cigarettes, old school, right? But they're basically the original flavored tobacco product. More young people smoke menthols than any other age group. Finally, electronic cigarettes. In so many styles, it's hard to keep track. In Wisconsin, vaping is more popular with kids than old fashioned cigarettes. But just like cigarettes, if it's got nicotine in it, it's addictive. Some people struggle their whole lives to quit. I don't want that for my kids. So what can a parent do? Start by learning more about the new tobacco products out there. Get involved and make sure your kids know sweet flavors don't make tobacco products any safer or less addictive. Tobacco's changing, parents. We've got to keep up.
Welcome back to Nyasha Milwaukee, Southeast Wisconsin first over the year Hmong television program. We take you back to get an insight of Representative Frederick Kessler's work with the Hmong community. It's very important for me to continue to vote to make sure that we expand Medicare because there are people who are not covered by this and if I can I would try to support universal health care uh, and I hope that uh, that uh, uh, the CHIPS bill uh, passes in the Congress uh, so that children uh, are, uh, uh, are also covered by, uh, by uh, health care. Uh, I'm hoping we have more among teachers at the public schools. I hope we have more among school board members who say, hey, this ought to be taught. Uh, and and th those things that that make uh, uh, the, the, the elected officials more responsive. I also w want to see more among uh, elected officials. I want them to be able to raise those type of issues because I think that's really important for, for the Hmong uh, acceptance in, in, in the community. And I want Hmong people to understand the importance of voting and how that enhances the job opportunities, and the political influence of the whole Hmong community. I'm proud of the fact that in, in Minnesota, there are three members of the Hmong, uh, Hmong members of the state legislature. And I know I was excited when, I think it was Mayor Mua, uh, was elected to the state senate in, uh, in uh, uh, Minnesota. And, uh, you know, of course, I am very, very happy uh, with my good friend, uh, Kashua Yang, who, who won the, w was the first elected Hmong to be a judge in the United States. That's really something, and I helped her do that, and I'm very proud of that. So I drafted a bill that allowed us to, uh, to require, we required, uh, all schools to teach Hmong history. Uh, I said, you don't have to take a little, much time to do it. This can be interjected in your history classes, but we, we ought to know what the Hmong community did on behalf of, the, of this. So I introduced it in 205, and it, uh, it didn't pass. I have drafted that bill every single session since then. We've, we've never been able to even get it scheduled for hearing. I think a large number of Hmong of them came down to the Capitol and were present at the, at the press conference and outside of the press conference. And there was really an enthusiasm for it. Uh, but we weren't able to persuade the education committee to do it. I am going, I'm committed, so long as I'm in the legislature, to make sure this bill is introduced I may have other people, if I can get some type of Republican to be the principal sponsor, if he gets me a guarantee of a hearing and some Republican support, I'll give up the, the uh, even if my, my name doesn't have to be on it, I want this bill to pass. Thank you, Representative Kessler, for sharing your story with us, and thank you for the work you do to help uplift the Hmong community and the community at large. If you would like to contact Representative Kessler, you can call his office at 888 Five three four zero zero one two. Again, that is eight 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 five three four zero zero one two. Stay with Nyojo Milwaukee TV. When we come back, we will take you to see what is going on in a Hmong community, and we will also bring you to Resting Place Massage Therapy Center, a Hmong business located in Milwaukee's third ward. I don't know when tobacco started changing, but man. Now tobacco comes in all these new sweet flavors. Grape, cotton candy, gummy bear, what? Tobacco's changing, parents. We've got to keep up.
ไม่ใช่ Welcome back to Nyojo Milwaukee TV. Let's go see some important announcements our community has to share. Smiley Dental is currently looking for a dental assistant to help assist with their growing practice here in Milwaukee. Some general requirements are as following. High school diploma, fluent in Hmong and English, fast learner, and hardworking. Please contact Dr. Lee with any questions at drlee at smileydental.com or 414-463-0855. After three and a half years, Grace Hmong Alliance Church had just finished their first service at their new location. We caught up with Pastor David Vang and here is what he has to say. The first worship service here in the new place was great. We got a chance to celebrate God's goodness in regards to the four years or three and a half years that we've been without a place. And we can definitely see God's sovereignty as he's definitely been guiding and, and being so provisional and guiding us here to I know it was so hard on behalf of all the teams and committees, the RC committee and Tantra Yosifu, and also the elders in the GA coming together with this decision. But, you know, we've had a couple bumps and scrapes along the road, but I think this is the place where God wants us to be. Uh, but most importantly, it's a place that we can definitely continue to proclaim the gospel to this community and so forth. And, you know, grace has always been dear in our hearts because it's the center of discipleship. And so, you know, this first day is just uh, congratulatory to everyone who's had a little finger or hand or anything a part of it too. And it's always a joy. We stand on the shoulders of those who've gone before us, like Sifin Zong, like Sifin Van Chau, and many of those that definitely have laid a, a foundation for us. So we're really thankful for everything else. To the rest of the Milwaukee community and anybody who's definitely um, coming into the town, uh, we would welcome you and definitely join us for a time of worship as we exalt Christ our King, as we continue to stand in the gospel. Uh, we hope that we'll definitely uh, continue to share the love and message of Jesus Christ in this community and that at the same time we can come together and uh, share in terms of the, the richness of not just that culture but also the gospel together too. And we'd love more than anything else to welcome you guys here in this community of faith. Oh yes, we're all very excited, um, definitely. We've been waiting for this day and we're so thankful that God has, um, you know, definitely brought us here today. But, you know, we're, we're looking forward to working along even with our neighbors and like what Subi said, you know, we welcome the whole community here and um, we definitely can't wait to see what the Lord will do in and through, um, you know, the, this church, His church. So thank you. Nyosha Milwaukee would like to congratulate Grace Hmong Alliance on their new place of worship. They will have their grand opening on March 3rd at 12 p.m. located at 4400 North Mayfair Road, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin 53225 and would like to extend an invitation to the public to join their worship on that day. On January 26, 2018, as family members of the Vu family and the Hmong community crowded the courtroom, Judge Jeffrey Kana denied a new trial for Dan Pop, who brutally murdered Mai and Pia Vu and Jesus Manso Perez. Mai Zhang Vu would like to give an update on the appeal trial and what's to come. <laughs> ตรงเปลาวันละตัวเพียร์ทําไมก็เนี่ยตอนนั้นตรงมาวากิสันวิสคอนเซนต์ต่อไปลูกสองตาวแล้วเนาะเราเช่นตอนนั้นเราก็
rồi nó tự chắc là yêu cầu lúc gì hay kia tự nhiên cái nó như là chủ muốn nhau lúc gì để bỏ đi cả học học tao cho nên là thọ ngô hù ít cho mình chỉ cái thứ này chắc sẽ là nên là các tôi ít dùng gì thế tôi một cộng thập về cà phê học bao cho tự chắc là họ cầu lúc gì tự nhiên nhau để bỏ đi cả một đất chỉ nên hù được bốn đất tôi sẽ tăng trào sự gì chi xa y bê o xa o lấy ra xong đây được bốn đất tự nhiên nào sau này mong mai dòng vư mai dòng at att dot net cho nên là cụ thể ở đây sẽ là cho nó đào ở đây mua này luôn chơi luôn chỉ ba bên sẽ là đào ít luôn xong đào là nó ở đây sẽ là cho để mà xin gì đó nhau xong Thank you for the update, Mai Zhong. Again, the sentencing for Mr. Pop will be Friday, February 23rd. Visit Nyozha Milwaukee's TV Facebook on that day to get the latest details. When we come back, Nyozha Milwaukee will take you to Milwaukee's third ward to visit Abby Yang and the Resting Place Therapy Massage Center. I don't know when tobacco started changing, but man, now tobacco comes in all these new sweet flavors. Great, cotton candy, gummy bear, what? Tobacco's changing, parents. We've got to keep up. Welcome back to Nyozha Milwaukee TV. Whether you're looking to distress or in need of relief from chronic pain, accidents or injuries, Abby Yang and Resting Place Center is here to help you relieve the stress and the pain. Let's go get a closer look inside Resting Place Massage Therapy Center. I'm Ab Yang, and this is Resting Place Massage Therapy Center. It is my private office. I specialize in therapeutic massage therapy work where I treat sports injury and chronic pain. I'm located in downtown Milwaukee in an area called the Third Ward District. When I started this business, um, what I did was I did contact the Hmong Chamber of Commerce, asked them ideas as to how the best place as to um, getting started and so forth. From there, I did some searching and found this location, pretty much put everything together and the chamber helped steer me in the right direction as to um, how to set it up, marketing and so forth. My own personal experience with massage therapy work, um, I found it to be very beneficial with pain. I found it to be very beneficial with creating flexibility, endurance, and so forth. And I think the biggest thing was relief of anxiety, um, stress, and pain. Those were the three biggest things that hindered me from my daily living. What I do here is a little more than just massage therapy work. Um, they would probably call me more so of a body worker than a massage therapist. Um, I utilize various different massage modalities that treat not just the muscular skeletal system, but I work with the neurotransmissions of your brain. I work with the nerves of your body to not only work with just relieving muscle tension and pain from your muscles, but actually working with sending signals to your brain so that you can calm down, relieve stress, create focus and clarity. Being Hmong, um, there hasn't really been any Hmong therapist who I have come across that has provided this uh, service outside of our usual aunt and uncle who does it to help family members. And I knew that there was a way that we can utilize it to help more than just our family members. And that's how I made a decision to take formal training in it so that 
the knowledge that the ancient knowledge that we learned that was passed on from generation to generations can now be mixed in with scientific backings and clinical studies so that we can utilize what we've already known from centuries past mixing it with present clinical studies and research to be able to benefit not just our Hmong people but also everyone within the community. Uh, massage therapists in the state of Wisconsin are known as medical professionals. So in order for you to practice, you do need to be licensed within the state. There's two exams that you take. One is the massage therapy license that certifies you as, uh, as a massage therapist. And then also to be able to practice, you also need the Wisconsin massage therapy license to be able to practice in Wisconsin. You know, when you're done with someone, it's a smile on the face, knowing that they can leave the, your, your treatment table and be pain-free. It's the biggest joy, knowing that you've been able to help someone make their lives better. So originally, it was just created so that I can help people. They can come in, we can treat them, help them deal with their pain, maintain it, make them pain-free, and then off they go. I am at a point right now where demands are high. They need reputable therapists that are effective. Uh, because of that, I am actually bringing on another therapist to help me starting February. I've added on a second treatment room. Uh, my goal is to grow this into a health and wellness center where we treat a person's body, mind, and soul. Um, with that being said, I am definitely looking at other practitioners to be brought into this facility as I grow and add more space. The more therapists here and the more varied practitioners here, the more we can help people become healthy and well. For questions and so forth, uh, you can call me. My office number is 414-335-3461. Most of the time I am in session because my office is very busy. So if you do get my voicemail, please leave a message and I will return your call as soon as possible. If you kind of already know that you want to schedule with me, online scheduling is available for your convenience. You could just go to restingplacemassagetherapy.com, click on online scheduling and go ahead and schedule yourself in too. If you're in pain, you're dealing with sciatica issues, you're dealing with headaches and migraines on a regular basis, those are symptoms of the body that massage therapists are well skilled to treat. Um, if you have those and you're curious to wanting to know how massage therapy can treat chronic pain and so forth, just give me a call. Just give me a call and I'd be more than happy to sit down and explain to you how I can benefit you. For more information about Abby Yang and Resting Place Massage Therapy Center, visit their website at restingplacemassagetherapy.com or call 414-335-3461. Thank you for joining Yajon Milwaukee TV, Southeast Wisconsin's first over-the-air Hmong television program. We leave you tonight with this message. Avoid jumping into conclusions and making judgmental statements when others make mistakes. Move from apathy to empathy. Thank you once again for joining us. May our community be blessed and inspired.